Welcome to the World Summit on the Information Society 2016 in Geneva, Switzerland. And I'm delighted to be joined by Manuel de Costa Cabral, who is the co-president of CEPT, that's the Conference of Postal and Telecommunications Administrations. Manuel, welcome. Now, you attended another very key WISIS meeting. It was the WISIS Plus 10 in New York mm -hmm. in December. What were the outcomes of that meeting? Well, uh, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, I would like to, to say that uh, the, the meeting uh, in New York uh, went in a very constructive and positive manner. And the outcomes uh, uh, that uh, resulted from that meeting uh, were uh, really encouraging and positive results, I think. Uh, so, in my view, uh, the development uh, section, uh, the, the development outcomes that came out from the, uh, from the meeting were um, extremely rich and extremely helpful for our, to settle a framework for which the international community, the international um, uh, uh, stakeholders can work to, in the pro to, to proceed with that agenda. So first of all, there is a linkage, a clear linkage between the WISIS process and uh, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. I think it was a clear outcome of that meeting. And there was also very much an emphasis on still maintaining a multi-stakeholder approach. Exactly, exactly. So uh, there was a clear indication that the linkage between the UESIS process and the uh, Sustainable Development Goals are only met if it's only met if multi-stakeholders work together in, uh, in that process. So I think that is a very good message that came out of there. Uh, also, I see as positive uh, to see that in a such high level uh, meeting as uh, the one uh, held uh, under the uh, UN uh, General Assembly umbrella, uh, uh, there is a clear indication that the ICTs, the Information Society, is not like just a jargon uh, for some technical experts. No, it's part of our daily lives, it's part of our uh, daily activities, and uh, uh, so this is also uh, an indication about the, pro the progress that we made and uh, uh, the progress that uh, we were able to build together uh, in the last couple, well, in the last 10 years or so. It was a very quick change that, that our society uh, uh, has made. Um, as you say, there's been massive progress in the yeah. uh, last uh, 15 years, yeah. a real internet and digital revolution. Exactly. Tell me about the country that you come from, yeah. uh, Portugal. Yeah. Um, what steps have you taken in Portugal to build an information society? Uh, well, so um, in Portugal I think it's a very interesting case in uh, a number of uh, perspectives. Uh, so we went uh, through a, a difficult uh, economic situation, financial situation. Uh, so uh, the, the, the public administration was not so keen to invest in, the, in, this, uh, in uh, this sort of uh, issues. But then what happened was that the fierce competition between uh, private companies allowed uh, to uh, have, uh, has to have a strong investment still in networks. So they were able to lay down uh, the networks, uh, NGA networks, uh, both uh, through, through fiber or cable uh, networks, uh, and then uh, which resulted in a coverage, uh, NGA coverage, uh, uh, which is quite significant if, uh, even in the e European Union level. So we are among the highest, uh, uh, the highest uh, penetration in terms of coverage in EU. Uh, within the, our EU colleagues. Uh, uh, but and there's still some challenges. Yeah, b yeah, but there are still some challenges and the challenges we face are uh, exactly on the take-up of broadband. So people, uh, uh, there is still a long way to go to, to have uh, the full benefits of those networks, the full benefits of these broadband services. And uh, uh, I just would uh, give you uh, indications. So there are groups of population that are highly educated, they have access to these startup uh, services and so on, and so they are full uh, uh, be benefiters of this uh, revolution that we are facing. But then there is also um, a different group of uh, people uh, that live in rural areas or remote areas that are not so 
uh, not, not benefiting so much of this, uh, of this process. So there's even yeah. a digital divide in an advanced market like Portugal between exactly. rural and urban. Exactly, exactly. So the challenge that we face, uh, sometimes we speak about digital divide between uh, among uh, different countries, among, among different continents. But obviously, with, even within countries, we see that we even uh, we see different realities and different perspectives, um, and so we have also to work um, so that these services continue to um, become affordable to everyone. Uh, that there is uh, literacy, digital literacy, so it's very important to work on the education, to work with the uh, young uh, children since the beginning to. Uh, so that they can make use of these uh, And reap ICTs. the benefits, yes. Yes, absolutely. Manuel de Costa Cabral, co-president of SEPT, thank you very much for thank joining you, us. Thank you very much. <laughs> and please do join us on the ITU YouTube channel where we'll be hearing from experts from all over the world on the impact that information and communication technologies can make on our daily lives.